Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. Amen. 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 Mark 11, 23. The faith scripture, there are some faith scriptures. I, I, I love some scriptures. I love Mark 4, the parable of the sower. Because Jesus said in Mark 4, if you don't know this parable, you cannot know any other parable. So I call it the granddaddy of all parables. When he was to teach the parable, he said, blessed are your ears. So whoever learns of that parable is blessed. Of course, blessed is anyone that hears the word of God. But there's a blessing that comes into your life when you sit under a man that knows the ways of God, and he explains that parable in such a way you understand. He so you are blessed eternally. You are blessed forever. You are blessed to your genealogies. So I love Mark 4. I love Hebrews 11. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtain a good report with God. Then it dawned on me that I may not have a good report with you, but I just need to do one or two things and I have a good report with God. Then he lists the archives of great men who have good report with God. And some attend good report with just a statement. Joseph said, don't bury me, for God will surely visit you one day. When he comes, take my bones and bury it in the promise. And that's how he enters Hebrews 11. He didn't do any other thing. He just entered Hebrews 11 with a statement. Then he dawned on me. I have to be careful of my words. Careful of my words. I have to be careful what I say. The doctor can approach you and say, from this ailment, you have a month to leave. What you say is what will determine whether you will live or die. What you say immediately. That's why I pray for that spirit of faith to rest on your head. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. When the Lord demands an utterance from you and you speak into his ear, say, well, say, I'm pleased. I like that statement. I love that. Then he'll just come and say, blessed, and begin to pronounce blessings. Blessings and blessings. Amen? Amen. I also love Mark 9, 23. That ranks you in the same class with God. The Bible says, by faith, God created the eons, the times, the heavens, the galaxies, and the earth. And by faith, the Bible says, for with God, when he was talking to Mary, nothing shall be impossible for with God. All things are what? Possible. Then in Mark 9, 23, he says, all things are possible to him that believeth. So that ranks me in the same operational capacity with God. I'm not God. I'm not the Father, I'm not the Son and the Holy Spirit, and I can never be. <laughs> I don't even want to be. Satan wanted to be, I'm not. Praise God. Ah, I'm just his little boy. Praise Jesus. His tiny baby. That's why I'm before God, but not before Satan. I'm not a baby. I'm, I'm an adult, vicious warrior, terrible, with teeth like swords, shred everything to pieces. But with God, he said, Solomon said, I'm before thee as a little child. Before God, I'm a little child. But before Satan, I'm a deadly, terrible warrior. A warrior, an overcoming warrior. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. That word believe changes the course of history. Mark eleven twenty three 23 said, whosoever can become whatsoever just by the word believe. That is what is separating the boys from the men. The word believe. Then we need to find out what does it mean to believe? Because that's the clincher. That is what is ranking you with God. That's what is making everything possible. That's what is making the impossible possible. Just that word. Say, you know, Jesus, they will say, help me, save if only you can believe. That's all he will say. What's this belief? Because if I can believe, then... I can move the Atlantic Ocean and suspend it in the sky and have my settlement in the sea if they are fighting for land everywhere and build my own settlement and leave the water in the sea until Jesus comes. 
Who cares if it drops when Jesus comes? I'm rapturing my family. Whoever wants can go there and the water will come down and wipe them all out. That's their cup of tea. The difference is belief. Whosoever can become whatsoever. You know, you can ask the Lord, say, Lord, um, can I get this? He will say, if only you believe. Say, this man is dead. Lazarus was dead. Decomposing for four days. He's not sick. He's dead. Buried. Mary, Mary said, if only you've been here by now, he's stinking. Jesus said, if only you can what? Believe. So believe will raise the dead. He said, if only you can what? Believe. Your brother will rise again. Wow, Jesus. If only you can believe, cancer will vaporize, vanish, disappear. If only you can believe, AIDS will vanish. If only you can believe. They don't need tubes. They don't need ovaries. They don't need womb. Say, by faith, Sarah receives strength. What do you need to conceive? Strength, not womb, not tubes. What you need to conceive is what? Strength. And it comes how? By faith, believing. And you don't know me. To believe is what studying. Or you don't think so? Yes, sir. We have to study it. Because I want to believe. And walk on the streets. Yes. And when the hands make us say, hey, put those weapons down. They put it, if you believe, they'll put it down. In Genesis 11, 1 to 6, the Bible says, and the earth was of one language, one set of people, they were all one people, one, you know. And they said, let's make for ourselves a tower that the head will reach into heaven. What? And let's make a name for ourselves. Let's not spread. God said we should spread, but let's do this. That's why God will have to descend. He will have to. No, sorry, he's not going to descend anymore. We're the ones that will descend and scatter the language. Because he's now resting. He's on the sixth day. He's on the seventh day. We're on the sixth day working. So he is expecting us. We will put those guys under his feet. Don't worry. I will do it if you wouldn't do it. I will do it. I would do it by speaking. And when I speak, I will do what? Believe. That's the clincher. They can't understand. I just need to believe. When I say it, it will happen. God says, these people are one. And there is nothing. They have embraced, imagined, persuaded, and accepted in their mind to do. Not even I, God, can stop them. That sounds like belief. They will build it into heaven. It will pass the stars. It will reach the third heaven. If I leave these people. Because they believe. The word believe means to embrace. To admit. It gives you idea of an alert on your phone without cash in your hand. It says if you can believe that that alert means money has entered your account, though you can't see it or handle it with your hand, say then it will handle it, will come into your hand. It will enter your hand. Say nothing will stop it from entering your hand. If you believe, it's an alert system. If you accept as done, though it does not look done. So if I say, Within the next 40 days, we'll hear of your appointment. If you accept that's done, so done. If I tell you within the next 40 days, you will have the sermon. If you accept it as done, done, though you can't see, but done. He said, no force in heaven and on earth will stop it. That's what he said. He says, fill your imagination. With the result, not what you are seeing. That means, see, I, I guess, you're going to see yourself. And then, that's why if they say if you believe, you will say what you believe. That means you're going to tell people, um, Sir Eli, please don't be angry. Please, um, this time next year, I pray God will keep you to be alive. I'll be coming with young Samuel. Please. Um, what's the procedure here? 
That's somebody who has accepted as done. Jesus said nothing. No, not even God can stop it again. For God to stop it, he has to change that belief system. That's why God said, the only way I can stop them from building that tower is to change their language. Once they stop saying what they believe, it will no longer work. Outside of that, it cannot be stopped. So what did God do? He changed their belief to unbelief. He could not stop the building because they believed. So what did he do? He changed their belief to unbelief. So instead of saying what they believed, they began to say different things. And there was no coercion. There was no oneness. And everything scattered. And it's the same principle to scatter and the same principle to build. So Mark eleven twenty three 23 says, if you can believe, there is nothing in this life you cannot attain to. There is no whatsoever you cannot have if only you believe. I also believe very strongly in explaining this, we need to look at a few examples and understand what this means to believe. Because I found out that in Georges chapter 6, the angel of God appeared to Gideon and said to... Now, Gideon, let me explain because I don't want to go about reading it. Gideon was an Israelite and they were under the yoke of the Moabites. The Moabites were pressing them. So he was threshing wheat in a wine press. That's not where he's supposed to thresh wheat. That means he's fearful. That means he could be, the wheat could be captured from him anytime. So he was oppressed. Now the angel appeared and said, Hell, my, you know, one of the things I love about Mary, when you look at the two, you see believe and unbelief. He looked at Mary and said, Hell, highly favored one, you have found favor with God and man. Thou shalt conceive and bear a son. He shall be called Jesus, for he shall save the people from their sin. Mary said, I agree with you, but I'm yet to marry, so how do we get it done? Did you hear that? Then he said to her, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. The power of the highest will overshadow you. That which shall be conceived shall be called holy. Now, that looks absolutely impossible, but see how the belief worked. As the angel said that to her, because I don't just want to talk and teach. I want to look at some practical examples for us to understand what belief is so that we can believe. Am I communicating? Yes. I want you to believe so that you can rank in the realm of the gods. As soon as the angel departed, you see the difference between Mary and Gideon. Mary said, my soul Doth magnify the Lord. My spirit has rejoiced in God my maker. For he has regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. From henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. For faithful is he who has shown me mercy. For he has remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac and Jacob. How is she behaving like someone that has conceived? How is she talking like someone that has given birth? How is she acting like someone that is pregnant? She embraced it as if it was already done. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. In Gideon's case, I'm not preaching, I just want you to get it. The angel said, Hail, thou mighty man of valor. Judges 6. Me? Say yes. He 
if I am a mighty man of valor, why are we oppressed? Is that belief? No. It will never work. The angel returned in Judges 7. Was yet to believe. It can't work. God has spoken, but it cannot work. When God visited Abraham in Genesis 17, he said, Thou shalt have a son, and you shall call him Isaac. The Bible says Abraham laughed and said, Shall a child be born to him that is hundred? You know, in Romans 4, it says Abraham believed. But that statement is unbelief. God had to come back in Genesis 18. Because he, had, he was yet to believe. If he didn't believe, Isaac cannot come. He had to come back in Genesis 18. This time, God said, this time next year, Sarah shall have a son. Abraham kept quiet. He didn't say a word. It was Sarah that laughed. But her statement was not unbelief. He said, you mean I'm going to have pleasure by now? Meaning she's now believing. God now left. Genesis 19, Sodom. Genesis 20, um, issues. 21, Sarah gave birth. Without Genesis 18, Abraham will not give birth because in Genesis 17, it was in unbelief. He said, let Ishmael live. He was yet to embrace it as if it was done. In that Judges 6, I was so random. I'm not preaching. One of the things I like about Mark 9, sometimes people believe they believe. And I've seen people who think they believe. And, you know, my own case, it's God that taught me faith. I never learned faith anywhere outside of God. And most of the lessons I learned by faith, the Lord will appear and say, this is how you do this, this is how you do this, this is how you do this, this is how you do this. After they told Gideon in Judges 6, and all he was saying was rumbling and grumbling and talk. The angel departed. The angel came in Judges 7. In Judges 7, they began to tell him again. Sorry, Judges 6 from verse 11. The angel told him. He ran to the door from 12 to 13. Then the angel came back. Go in this thy strength and overcome. He said, with strength. That's unbelief. Then... They told him in verse 36, oh yeah, how shall we prove? He said, let's fleece. That's when he did fleece. After he finished fleece, he still didn't believe. Judges 7, it was so bad. God had to tell God. God was waiting for him to believe because if he didn't believe, if he goes to that world, he'll be slaughtered. That's what has happened to people. They think they believe. They march onto the field to attack sickness. And they are, I've seen a young boy, 28, he had cancer. I said, you don't believe. He said, I believe for it is written. <laughs> it was wounded for your transgression. I said, that's, you are still in unbelief. I said, if I see unbelief from a mile, a hundred miles, I will know. I was talking to a man. He said, there are two things I know in this life. About chickens <laughs> and about governance. He said, I've spent 25 years in between the two. He said, if I sleep and a chicken makes a sound, I know what is wrong. He said, if I, he said, I know about governance. He said, those are two things I know. One thing I know, or two things or three things, I know about faith, I know about death. He said, this unbelief. He quoted another scripture. I left him, he died less than a month later. 28 years of age. What scripture? He said, this is unbelief. And in Mark 9, this man brought his... Was his son or his daughter to the Lord, his son, to be healed? And Jesus said, he told Jesus, said, I brought it to your disciples. They couldn't heal. And Jesus said, oh, help me. Jesus said, if only you believe. Then he said, Lord, I believe. <laughs> it didn't take time for him to say, help my unbelief. What he called belief is not what the Lord called belief. We must have seen the expression of the Lord. That's not belief. Say, help thou my unbelief. Then his son was cured. In Judges chapter 7, from verse 1 to 4, God began to tell Gideon, go to the camp of the enemies. He went to the camp of the enemies and heard two soldiers, the Moabites of them, narrating a dream to each other. Say, I had a dream. Say, I saw a loaf of bread run down our camp. He says, the son of Gideon, he's going to destroy us. As he left there, he now believed. 
He returned. He told all the soldiers, rise! Now that is a man that believes Moabite is done, he's finished. At that juncture, Moabite is doomed. Why? He has embraced it as he's now a mighty man. Of but he never saw it that way until God had to take him to processes, 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 processes. Because if you don't believe, God cannot do anything. So if God moves first, you don't believe, he has to move again, you don't believe, he has to move again. Until you get to that point, when you embrace it as if it is done. Now in 1 Samuel chapter 1, 1 Samuel chapter 1, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you bored? In 1 Samuel chapter 1, I read, um, it's a long reading, but um, of course it's glaring, Hannah believed. So what did she do that she believed? She had gone to Shiloh every year to pray probably fast, because she wasn't eating. At Shiloh, she wasn't eating. So she was praying. It's either she was fasting or not eating out of worry. Some people, when they're worried, they don't eat. And some people, when they're worried, they eat a lot. But nobody that is worried eats normally. If you're worried, you either eat a lot. You start eating 1 a.m., 2 a.m., it's a sign that you're worried. 2 a.m., you wake up, you want to go and snack. It's a sign of worry, doubt. Nothing's going to work. Mm. Some people have the habit normally. But some don't have that habit. It happens occasionally. When it happens like that, they're worried. Then some don't eat because they're worried. Then some eat so much when they're worried. I know about worry. I know about doubt. I know about faith. I know about death. The seven manifestations of death. I know it in and out. If I see it at a distance, I know it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I also know about life and overwhelming life. life. If I know that one more than death, praise God. <laughs> For he started looking at me, this man, praise Jesus. Every year she would pray. Then, in verse... 17, Eli said to her, go in peace. The God of Israel grant thee thy petition that you have asked of him. And she said, let thy handmaid find grace in thy sight. So she went her way, she ate, and her countenance was no more sad. That is believe to Hannah. That's believed to Hannah, right? But that may not be believed to every other person, but that's believed to Hannah. God said to tell you to believe that your day has come. Amen. Your hour has come. Amen. The vision is no longer prolonged. Amen. Your Samuel has arrived. Amen. Meaning, you have to prove that you believe. So God is expecting something from you. For Hannah, go and eat. Amen? Kenneth Hagin, I read in his books, said he was conducting a revival. And there's a man came to the front. The Lord showed him. The man was bent. And the Lord showed him he was bent by a spirit of infirmity by a demon, and that's why the man couldn't raise. So he said, he said, Jesus stood by him and said, cast out the demon in my name and get him healed. He said, okay. So he spoke to the demon and said, in the name of Jesus, you come out of him. He said, it's done. He said, now see, bend and see. If, so, he said, so he said, see if you can bend. And the man could not bend. Oh. Tried, it couldn't work. He said, okay, he went back to his seat, brought him again. He said, he said, he prayed for him three times. He didn't get well. Then the Lord appeared again. I said in my name, cast out the demon. He said, I cast it out in your name. He didn't go. 
Said, then the Lord said, I said they will go. He said, but you saw it just now. I cast it in your name, Lord. It did not go. He said, I said they will go. He said, immediately he knew what was wrong. He said, he came back and said, you demon of unclean spirit. You come out of him in Jesus' name. Now bend because you are healed. He said, the man touched the toe and started running. If was the difference between belief. If, a language. One, is it alphabet, adjective? What is it called? A verb. Is it a verb? Just one adjective. Is the unbelief that didn't let somebody well and he would have died. So what has killed some people is one verb. What has sent people to the early grave is one small adjective. What has disturbed some people is not eating. What has killed some people is eating. Today, you will know your belief. Amen. Today, you will know your belief. Amen. And you will believe. Amen. And I declare that you believe. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I de- say I believe. I believe. Say I believe. I believe. Say I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. Now it's not just to be. Say I believe. I believe. What God calls me. What God calls not what man calls me. What did they call Hannah? Is it Benina call her parents? God said, no, you are the mother of Samuel. You are the mother of a great prophet. What did they call uh, uh, Mary? A small boy said, no, you are the mother of thousands and of many generations. You are their mother. What did he call Gideon? Mighty man of valor. Nobody called him that name in Israel. They brought Gideon. What's up? They're not brought Gideon. You're a mighty man of valor. The fiber. He cannot stop you from being a mother. In the block book. He cannot stop you from being fruitful. God did not put that condition when he declared be fruitful. He never. Don't add it. Don't add it. He didn't say if your tubes are clear, that shall be more. He said be fruitful. Never. He didn't put a condition. The only condition he gave us in Mark 11, 23. Believe. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. is as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.